British presence in India officially started in the 1580s, when Queen Elizabeth I granted permission for merchants to sail to the Indian Ocean. Then, in 1600, a group of merchants, known as the Adventurers, succeeded in gaining a royal charter under the name of Governor and Company of Merchants of London trading with the East Indies. The group was the forerunner to what was to become the English East India Company and, over the next 200 years, it was to grow into an all-powerful de facto government with a private army and wide powers granted by the British Crown. Other European powers rivaled the British interest in the region, but after the decisive battles of Plessy in 1757 and Chinsura in 1759, the French and Portuguese respectively played little part in further Indian colonisation. East India Company expansion under the guise of treaties, annexation and the far more devious doctrine of lapse continued for the next 100 years, until elements of the Indian army finally ended its rule with the Indian mutiny, covered it in number 10 of the series. Following the uprising, the British government nationalised the East India Company. The Crown took over its Indian possessions, its administrative powers and its armed forces. The East India Company was officially dissolved in 1858 and the country was thereafter directly governed by the Crown as the new British Raj. Several medals had been awarded to troops undertaking various battles and sieges during this expansion period, but the vast majority of the recipients were members of the East India Company's private army and the medals issued by the company, not the Crown, and are therefore not covered by this series, the exceptions being the Sutlej, Punjab and Army of India medals. A fourth medal was instituted by the Crown on the 23rd of January 1854, just before the mutiny, for the Second Anglo-Burmese War, fought between April 1852 and January 1853, which resulted in a British victory and more Burmese territory being annexed by the company. At the Governor-General, James Brown Ramsey's suggestion, it was decided that, due to the inevitability of further unrest, that the war be commemorated by a clasp for the medal, paving the way for future conflicts to be acknowledged by the awarding of additional clasps as and when required, and hence we have the issuing of the first India General Service Medal. The first of four similar styled medals issued for service in India for the next 85 years. The first clasp on the first medal, styled Pegu, after the Burmese region annexed after the war, was followed by 23 more two of which, that for Burma 1887-89 and Burma 1887-9, are for the same action, and a third, that for North West Frontier, covers a time frame for over 18 years and was awarded for 16 different expeditions in the North West provinces and along the border with Afghanistan. By the time this version was updated, it had been on issue for 43 years, with a total of 24 clasps for 23 campaigns with 55 different qualifying actions over a geographic area that stretched from Persia to Malaysia. The metal disc, which is made from fine silver, is 36mm in diameter. The obverse, designed by William Wyon, features a profile of the young Queen Victoria, facing left, wearing a crown, surrounding her is the Latin legend Victoria Regina, Victoria the Queen. The reverse, designed by Leonard Wine, depicts a winged and standing figure of victory, crowning a seated semi-naked warrior with a laurel wreath. In the exerg are lotus flowers and leaves. The disc is suspended from its ribbon by an ornate silver swivelling suspender, and the ribbon, which is 32mm wide, is divided into five stripes, three red and two dark blue, all of equal width. The medals were always named around the edge, but the style of naming differed from clasp to clasp, sometimes with impressed capitals, more often with engraved running script. The clasps, again made of silver, are fixed to the suspension by rivets. Between each clasp are a pair of rosettes. The medal was never issued without a clasp, and the most any one man received is believed to be seven. The last clasp for which this medal was issued that for operations in the province of Waziristan, was issued in 1895, at which point it was decided that the medal should receive an update, especially now that the young queen design on the obverse was well and truly out of date. 
The new version of the India General Service Medal was approved in 1896 and issued to officers and men of the British and Indian armies for various military campaigns in India, chiefly for service on the northwest frontier during 1895 to 1902. The design on the updated obverse featured the Thomas Brock version of the Queen, facing left with a crowned and veiled head. Surrounding her is the Latin Victoria Regina et Imperatrix, Victoria, Queen and Empress. The reverse, designed by George de Sauls, portrays an English and Indian soldier standing together side by side, each with a hand on a single standard. On the left is the inscription India, and on the right, 1895. The medal is suspended by the same style ornate silver suspender as its predecessor, and the clasps are also of the same design as the 1854 version. The ribbon has changed, but only in the colour. This time it has five stripes, three red and two dark green, all of equal width. As this medal's lifespan transcended Victoria's reign, a second obverse was required, and in 1903 the medal was redesigned with the profile of King Edward VII, before being replaced in its turn again with the third India General Service Medal in 1908. Seven clasps were authorised to be issued with this version of the medal, although only six were issued to the Victoria version, all for operations in the northwest frontier. It would be easy to dismiss this medal as dull and boring. None of the actions for which it was awarded would ever become a major movie. The designs are nothing special, the appearance is a little ornate for some people's taste, and the drab, striped ribbon looks like Victorian wallpaper. That said, if one was looking for a representative of the Victorian medal family, then surely this would be the one. First issued in 1854, and with the second issue extending beyond Victoria's reign, this medal was available for over 70% of her reign. Hundreds of thousands were awarded to almost every regiment in the British and Indian armies, and many of the colonial regiments. They are readily available today to collectors and, in a hobby where a rare desirable medal can cost thousands, if not tens of thousands, one can obtain a good example of an India General Service Medal, relatively speaking, for pocket money. Many of Britain's finest soldiers were awarded this medal as they learnt their trade in the mountains and passes of the Indian subcontinent, men such as Frederick Roberts, Evelyn Wood and Garnet Wolsey. Another junior officer received this medal with the class for Punjab Frontier, 97-98, his first in a long line of honours, the then second lieutenant in the fourth Queen's own Hussars, Winston Churchill. Thank you for watching and join me again next time when we return to Africa and look at two medals issued for service on the continent in the late 1890s.